you've covered this entire experience yeah. from when the news broke to, of course, the tribute this week. Being in the arenas and being around the players, what has that been like? I mean, it's been hard. I, I, I think it's um, anytime you deal with with grief, whether you're experiencing it yourself or you are trying to comfort those around you, um, you know, it's hard. It's, you don't. Everyone deals with it differently. So to try to predict the right things to say, um, you know, it, it's. Uh, it's it's hard. I, I think the biggest lesson I think I've learned in dealing with people and dealing with grief myself is just try to be um, as true to your feelings as possible. Um, and so, you know, I, like you said, I, I, when the news broke, I was getting ready to go into the studio. I was assigned to host what we call raps which is pregame, halftime, and postgame um, of the Pelicans-Celtics game. So it was supposed to be like five minutes mm -hmm. tops television, you know, pregame, halftime. It's not that long. Um, but then as I was getting ready, I got a call from our good friend Diana Rossini, who, you know, is always on top of every breaking news story regardless. So she calls me. She goes, is this, is this, is this true? I go, what are you talking about? She goes, Kobe's dead. And uh, immediately I put her on speaker and I start scrolling. I don't see it. So I think I don't know where she where she saw it first. And then all of a sudden I saw it on TMZ and I'm like, oh, my God, I start freaking out and I keep scrolling, trying to hope that it was wrong, that not uh, w wishing, looking for another outlet to confirm it, but wishing that I didn't find it. And then, you know, I was in the um, bedroom with my husband with her would die on the phone and he just looks at me and he goes you got to get to work and you got to focus on on um you know on, on what's ahead of you right now and so what i did i i mean i talked to her die through it on my way to the to the office and then she actually gave me a good idea to call bob lee um and and just ask him like how he's dealt with you know stories like this i mean he's been working for espn for over i don't even know 35 years so he's handled I mean this is one of the biggest stories mm -hmm. of all time but he's handled so many different stories and I called him and he goes look there's, there's two things you just need to focus on here is focusing on delivering the facts and then when it comes to gathering perspective just make sure you're comfortable with what you're saying mm -hmm. and so I know it sounds very simplistic but like my head was racing a million miles an hour um you know, like I, I didn't even have time to like feel sad about it. I just was like so in shock mm -hmm. um, and trying to gather the information, make sure that things were correct. And so getting onto the set, you know, I've been I have been um, way more nervous in way less important situations, but I felt, I feel like I just, I felt like, all right, I just need to make sure I'm accurate and, um, you know, figure out what, what's going on here today because you're part of, you know, delivering some news to some people who may have not heard mm -hmm. this yet. So that was an, an, an intense day. Um, I think, um, you know, it is a day I wish I never had to, to be a part of, but, um, right. I'm glad that I was able to have a clear head and and um, be able to deliver the news um, for 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 some people that day. And then through the week, you know, I had to interview Kyrie Irving, um, and I don't know if Ky Kyrie was um, one of like Kobe. Kobe, and many times said if he had one mentee um, that you know he had a, the closest relationship to would be Kyrie. And, he, and as we could tell, you know, so many young players have come out and said how Co Kobe was a mentor, how he went out right. of his way. But he himself said that Kyrie's a mentee. 